Okay, we've gone through a couple different lessons here, with the last one being the uh, Star Dream right here. Hmm. The Star Dream versifying clear on here. I was going to say, my impressions look like they might be kind of bleeding a little bit. I was wondering if the Brilliance might have been a better choice for that. In terms of a faster drying black, but um, eh, I don't know, not too bad, but I don't know. It, it seems like it's kind of moving on me a little bit. We'll have to watch for that one and, and see if that's the case there um, when it com dries completely. But that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the Brilliance pads on this foil cardstock. Now, this is definitely one of these um, pigment ink, uh, Brilliance specific pigment ink um, assignments, unless you're using something like a Stazon. You can do that. Um, you know, for a very effective, fast-drying um, impression. Okay, so, that being said, let's do a similar type of thing to this. Let's do a moon type of um, lighting uh, type of uh, situation here. Maybe we'll go, instead of uh, landscape, we'll go um, portrait on this, okay? And let's let's change up the uh, the composition a little bit. Let's go a little bit higher with the composition, and let's have a little bit more um, water reflections down here. I don't know. It's just for no particular reason. I just want to change things up a little bit. Okay. Same type of process as that last one. Okay. This is a brilliance moonlight white right here. I've tried um, the stays on pigmenting. I don't know how many of you had this. Um, pad sitting around or what or if you do I had never even heard of stays on before uh, pigment ink okay but I just tried it and it works pretty good but for this purposes right here getting this kind of this um, column of light it's kind of hard to do it with the stays on pigment because this thing is drying just so fast I had a hard time kind of manipulating it okay so my moon is going to be roughly about right here okay it's like a little powder puff of ink, isn't it? What this does is it kind of blocks up. <laughs> it's kind of interesting just in itself. Um, okay, and then we're going to have that water um, column down here. I'll show you what I do. You know, just here's a little um, kind of alteration here, too. What I'll do is I'll kind of um, have it flare out at the bottom so it's kind of like a, a very narrow type of um, pyramid shape type of deal right here okay and what you can do is you can try to kind of manipulate it a little bit to where um, it's a little bit lighter on the perimeter like this you know kind of where the lighting is kind of dissipating a little bit okay like that okay something like that it's kind of interesting, it's like a little abstract something, isn't it? And then if you want to, you can kind of hit those areas right in here where you think your um, uh, lakeside cove, the rocks are going to be. Something like that again. All right, now, be mindful now. <laughs> this is not going to dry fast at all. It's going to be remaining wet, you know, on your drive home or whatever. You're uh, stamping this at, at that uh, get together, all right? So we don't want to touch that, you know, with our hands. If you do touch it and smear it, what you know, then so be it. I, I'm smearing mine all the time. And okay, let's go with some impressions here. The brilliance black. This one's graphite black. There's three different brilliance pa uh, black pads, I believe. One of them was, uh, I think, lightning black or something like that. And it, when you kind of tilt it, you know, the impressions, it has kind of this, and then this different tinge of color in it. It's pretty interesting. I might pick up one of those pads as well. Okay, standard practice, wiping off the bottom here. Okay, now here's what you're going to have to be a little bit, you know, uh, mindful of. Okay, not worried about, but just mindful of. When you're stamping kind of over this wet ink, no, I didn't, that's not a real thick application of it up here, okay? It's kind of thin, like that. But in this thicker areas, if we do end up stamping something over it, 
um, just be mindful that it's kind of a thick ink, and if you're stamping a thick ink onto thick ink, the tendency is it wants to move a little bit. So as you're stamping down, you don't want it to kind of move. Now, if it does, because it's wet, if it, you get any kind of smears, just take your paper towel and just wipe it right off, clean it off, and just start over again. It's really great that way. Okay, so we're going to do probably three impressions with this. One, two, and three, okay? But re-ink in between your impressions. Okay, so just lining up roughly those that area right there with that um, uh, white, uh, I don't know, whatever, lighting uh, type of uh, scheme that we have on there, okay? All right, see that right there? It's kind of hard to show uh, the imagery on this reflective, very reflective. It's hard to take a photograph of these two. That's why I tell people, um, you know, take a you know a video with your phone if you're going to show it on like Facebook or something, and you know, kind of tilt it around like this so you can see the reflections. Okay, so standard practice right here. Now remember, you when you overlap your previous impression, you know that is wet on wet, so. You know, just kind of be mindful that you're not kind of smearing it about. Oh, let's use the, uh, the pines and rocks in here, too. And let's add those in the foreground, okay? All right, so remember, just overlap about, I don't know. I mean, there's no set amount, uh, about a quarter inch or so. And we have our row of uh, um, rocks and trees like that. Okay. All right. So these ones are going pretty fast. Now we're going to add in some little extra kind of touches into all these pieces of a white paint pen I mentioned to uh, uh, to the stamper uh, that's having the get together or getting together with I don't know wherever they're getting together um, to have some white paint pens that's going to really add in some nice um, touches. Now, yeah, I am a little worried about that. I didn't, I don't know, that Claire's, I don't know, that's really moving on me on that uh, page. Maybe you better use your brilliance on that one. I'll put it in the comments section for the uh, that video. <laughs> I'm still learning on, uh, you know, the, uh, the different inks and whatnot. Like I said, uh, if I did, I, I think that's the second scene I've ever used the, uh, the Versafine Claire on as far as the star dream goes. Okay, so the pines and rocks small here, adding kind of a row of them down here. It stamps out differently over the top of whiting sometimes. Sometimes not. I don't know. Sometimes it does. What can I say? Uh, you know, it just depends on how much ink has been laid down on the surface right there, too. You know, like that white ink. Okay, I'm going to put a full, um, I don't know, layering of images. Okay, so I went about four times here. One, two, three, and then four, like that, okay? It has a really different feel to it, doesn't it? And it also, with such reflective types of surfaces, it really kind of depends on what lighting is hitting it. Right, and let's go with the moon there. I mean, that you could just leave that as is, and it looks like a like a sun or something like that to me. Okay. Now be mindful. Remember, you know that's going to be wet, so sometimes we have a tendency to grabbing it, you know. But don't worry about it if it does, you know. Especially, you know, if you're in a kind of a workshop situation, you want you want to get down as the concepts, okay. I always tell people in my workshops and whatnot, you know, don't worry about kind of the, uh, the process, you know, the end results and whatnot. If you put your finger in a print in it or something like that, it's not as if we were going to submit these to the, uh, the Museum of Modern Art or something like that. What you want to do is you want to get down the concepts and then, you know, on future pieces, you apply these concepts to all of your different thing, you know, things. We're learning, uh, we're learning here, okay? We're not, uh, I know everyone wants to, you know, commit, you know, create uh, 
you know, beautiful pieces and works of art and whatnot, but uh, try to get down those concepts and that will lead you, you know, to whatever, but you don't want to be focused on just, you know, oh my god, I, you know, I put my finger in it and, you know, kind of lose track of, uh, you know, what you're learning here. Okay, adding in my moon, like about like so. All right, isn't that fun like that? Okay. Now we can also do things, you know, we can also add in some extra, you know, clouds out here. I'm not going to do that on this one right here, or on these scenes. You know, I have videos on how to do that, but we want to get... Um, this group through, you know, various techniques. We still have photo stamping to go. We have uh, matte paper, glossy paper, um, etc. You know, and we're going to play around with some different things here. Um, but let's try uh, to add in a little bit of and some extra tone. Remember, like we kind of uh, swiped in some extra tones in here. All right, you can do the same thing with um, brilliant inks on foil. This is going to be a very different feeling um, type of process. It definitely is for me, okay, because we're dealing with a lot of wet ink here. But, okay, you kind of start adding it in like so. I'm not going to go overboard with this one here, but um, kind of move this around. Like I said, just stay in one little corner and work it, okay? Blend it, okay? and taper it, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm kind of concentrating it on the edge, and I'm working my way in. See, I haven't re-inked or anything like that. And I have one corner kind of taken care of. See that right there? It's really hard to see, but I'll do that in the four corners, okay? And then we'll kind of create a little bit of a vignette, and that contains um, the scene very nicely, okay? It kind of frames it, doesn't it? Okay. Now it kind of feels weird, like this is kind of feeling weird here a little bit, so I'm going to re-ink and then start to blend that in a touch like so. Now I would, like I said, I would add a little bit more focus, I think. Here we're going down here. I'm being kind of mindful about, um, you know, blurring these images that I stamped out down here. But if, if they get blurred a little bit, you know, for the sake of having this kind of a containment um, framing on it, then so be it. And one of the things as I'm doing this, <laughs> it occurs to me, I kind of forget about it when I'm doing this, but uh, or until I do it again. But as I'm doing this, it's it's kind of hard to tell how, how much of ink you've applied because you have light kind of reflecting off of the surface. And it, even for me, who's sitting here, it's kind of hard for me to see. So I kind of have to hold it at a certain angle. Okay, I'm putting a little bit of shadows down here in these rocks. Eh, not too much, okay. But just adding it down like so. Okay. So we have that right there. You're saying, what? You can't see it. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's pretty cool up close. Or in person, let me see if I can show it a little. And now it's reflecting me. OK, let's see. I have my hands in it. Camera's in it. It's like a mirror. It's hard to, it's hard to show. OK, so uh, let's do this. Let's put this little character in there. And I think that little character will kind of anchor the uh, scene a little bit more in terms of something within this space right here, okay? When I mean anchor, it's kind of like a visual anchor. If you put like a person or an animal or something like that or a cabin, something man-made, um, you know, without having any other types of elements like that, um, it kind of draws the viewer's attention right to, um, you know, some sort of living entity or something created, you know what I mean? It's just something out of the ordinary. Okay. All right, so I'm stamping over that white, so I'm trying to be careful not to smear this image and have it kind of um, run on me. I mean, it's not so precarious. 
face or anything like that, but you do have to be mindful when you're making that contact with it. Okay, so anyways, you see that like nice focal point like that? You have that nice kind of, you know, lighting on the lake and whatnot. All kinds of different things. You can, you can stamp things out in um, gold ink on gold, or if you have some silver on silver foil. Now remember, this is still wet. It's going to be wet. What you do is, um, if it's still really wet, um, I don't know, just put it aside um, and let it dry for right now. But it might take, hey, I don't know, it depends on where you are. But what I usually do is I just take this like this. If I'm sending something home with someone like from a convention or something like that, I just have them put it in a you know, piece of paper. Don't flatten this out like this or anything like that. But, you know, I just have them take it home like that and it'll be fine. Or take a little thing like this, fold it over, make a little pocket like that, okay? And put it in there like that. And, you know, just take it home like that, hold it like that until you get home. Take it out, you know, something like this, put it on a bookshelf or something like that, you know, and just have it sit there and check back in a week or so, you know what I mean, and see if this is um, set up and if it's completely dry for you. If it's not, let it sit a little bit longer. It will dry eventually, though, and when it dries, it does get pretty well set, so. But that's a pretty fun and effective little scene like that. What are we at, the 16-minute mark right there? I think these are really dynamic pieces. Now, um, as far as refinements go, I think I could have, you know, instead of just going like that, I think I could have, you know, kind of tapered that little white out a little bit more. Maybe put a little bit more white down here for those rocks, you know, to make it stand out. But I love that shimmer and that type of reflective light coming off of the surface of the water, you know. It's kind of indicative of how, you know, light would, you know what I mean, reflect off of a real surface like that, being that we're stamping on practically a mirror here. Really fun on silver, too, um, foils and holographics and whatnot. Holographics are pretty crazy and really super loud. These ones are a little bit more mellow by relation. I mean, it's hard to imagine this being kind of mellow, you know what I mean? But when I started playing around with the holographics that got super crazy in terms of the, uh, the visual volume, these are downright tame by kind of relationship, but uh, relation or uh, comparison. Um, but really fun to do. And like I said, I, you know, if you look at my white right there, it's not applied really smoothly. It's kind of goopy and blobby in some areas like that. But, you know, when you're looking at this thing at kind of arm's distance like that, you know, by the time you put in these things, now we're going to add in some little white ripples in here with, you know, uh, um, specular light, you know, with a white paint pen like this. And we'll add in some little details like that, it's going to really make some um, extra punch and impact on these scenes as well, okay, uh, you know, when we get around to it. So anyways, okay, two scenes done very quickly. Um, we'll get into, I don't know, maybe a photo stamping piece next, and then we'll get into kind of our more um, kind of involved um, color layering uh, pieces. And until then, Until then, we will let these two dry. <laughs> All right. One more scene down. <laughs> 